In today's video, I have this this cool puzzle from a game where it's actually checkmate in five, white blinded at checkmate in five. But you have to find it to be able to checkmate the king. So here, playing with the black pieces, white has played king f3 to king g4. Escaping from a check or moving away, moving out of a check from the rook. But they moved the wrong way, they moved into a box. All we need to do now is zip the block, the box closed, or whatever it takes to keep the box closed. We just need to close it. So the king's on g4. My thought process throughout this was, how am I gonna, how am I gonna make the box smaller? So I thought of playing g6 followed by f5 and king g7, and it would be checkmate. But the more I looked at it, and the, the more deeper I calculated, I noticed that white has two options to stop me from going into this plan. Well, firstly, they can play rook f1, and if I play f5, they'll just take it, and they are still up a lot of material. Keep in mind, there's a whole queen here on the other side of the board, so we have to be careful with what we play. And the other option was to play... Rook d5 with the same with the same plan to take the board in a5. However, with seeing that plan through when I was calculating, I noticed that why can't I just sacrifice the pawn directly? So I played f5, and now there was two options, two doors that have to, and I had two doors that opened, and I had to decide the, the correct one. So first looking at king h5, I thought that, okay, if the king goes to h5, the king's basically stuck from going back to the fourth rank, this rank here. It can't go, it can no longer go there, and I saw that this is the only escape square for the white king. And that allowed me to think, why not play king h7? Okay, I want to play g6 checkmate next. But white can stop it. White can play queen b6 attacking my rook on d8 which is defended by my bishop. So it's not much of a threat. But then I noticed, no man, this is checkmate in one. I can just play rook takes h3. It's checkmate. Because my king serves as the one blockading or preventing the king from hopping into g6. So king h5 doesn't work. Which allowed me to come up with Oh, or to calculate, not come up with um, king takes f5, taking the pawn sacrifice. And then I knew I had to play forcing moves, so I played rook f8 check. Now the king is, the white king has two options. can go to g6, or it can go to g4. So with g4, I, I was thinking on, of playing, forget, for the, forget that position I just showed, but I was thinking about playing rook f4, which was the right sequence. And after king g5, I thought, I can't play rook, rook h4 because after king h6, king g6, sorry, I have rook e6, but the king is escaping. And I was like, wow, okay, what can I play then? So after king h5, I saw a beautiful pawn sacrifice with g6. And after the king takes, which is forced to, I have two rooks here. A rook on e3 and a rook on f4. Now, I thought about playing rook e6, which was the correct move. However, rook f6 would have been a blunder if I played it. Luckily, I saw that after it goes back to, the king goes back to h5. This fourth rank is now open. So if I take rook takes h3, the king is escaping. And don't forget, I have to play with tempo, meaning I have to play forcing moves, moves with check, or else I get checkmated. Why there's a pawn here on d7 that's ready to promote, so I have to be very careful. Therefore, after g6, I said that uh, the king takes, and here in this case, I play rook takes e6, so that my rook on f4 maintains control of the fourth rank. Therefore, the king is forced to h5, and after that, I can deliver checkmate with rook h4. Okay, so what would happen if the king goes to g6? 
after g6, I saw that, okay, I can play rook f6. And after king h5, all forcing that the fourth rank is open. And the fourth rank plays a very big part in this. Because I can't take this pawn here. This is basically a transposition from the last position that I showed. Therefore, after king h5, I saw g6 check. And once the king retreats to its only square in g4, then rook f4 is checkmate, where all my pieces are, are actually working together. This rook on e3 is blocking the king from escaping the third rank. This rook on f4 is, is, is delivering checkmate and preventing the king from moving anywhere along the fourth rank. This bishop is protecting the rook on f4, which makes it possible to deliver checkmate. And it's blocking any potential king h4 ideas, even though it's not possible now. This pawn on g6 is blocking one of the king's escape squares, which is h5. And this pawn of mine on h6 is defending the bishop on g5. So all my pieces, except the king, are doing a great job here. The king helped me earlier on to deliver the checkmate, but all the soldiers delivered the final I don't know what word to use, but they delivered the final checkmate. <laughs> yeah.